some men. He's going to share uh, his story, and then we're going to have Stu come up. Uh, this gentleman has uh, an excellent testimony to share with you guys. It, it currently lines up with the weekend. Um, Chris and I have been friends for uh, several years. And when I say friends, I use that pretty lightly because he harasses me all the time. I think he only likes me because my wife makes scones. <laughs> He just got married this summer, so we knew that he's going to need dirt, so we gave him a big box of scones. <laughs> and they worked. <laughs> but um, we wanted Chris to share his testimony, as it lines up so well, how God uh, uses a man who says yes. Uh, he will use a man who says, I'm willing. I don't know what tomorrow looks like. I don't know what you have in store for me, Lord, but I trust you. And that's enough. Will you give it up for Chris Lewis? I 
immediately went into fight mode for her. I began to, to try to win her heart back, and she was just she was done with all the conflict that we'd had and with this new guy that was just amazing. Um, and so I would drive an hour and a half to my 12-hour night shift job while she was wherever she was. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I was going to break. And not my heart was going to break, but I was going to break because this weight was too much for me. And I began to call out to God for real, not just for him to save me. But I needed my dad. I needed a God that was bigger than me that could handle this because I couldn't. And I began to write out prayers and write out psalms and just cry out to him. And it began to grow in me so that I wanted him more. I wanted his presence more than I wanted her heart to return to me. Amen. And I remember one night, I finished my shift at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm driving home and I'm feeling this joy. And I'm like, how can I be feeling joy with everything that's going on? And I asked him, I said, do I feel this joy because she, her heart's going to return to me and everything's going to be okay? And I said, or do I feel this joy because she's going to leave and everything's going to be okay? And tears started running down my face and I knew what the answer was. And later on that day, she said to me that this guy was too important to her and her heart was dead to me and she was going to leave. And I kept crying out to God for his presence for him to reveal himself to me. And we made it through Christmas, I don't know how. It was just an act, and it was miserable. And all I could see was that my wife and my daughter would be moving out. But I was so focused on calling out to God that that was my priority. You see, before this in my life, I had, you know, had this bravado about God and how I wanted to be a warrior. We talk about being a warrior all the time, right? And I wanted to be that too. I wanted to be the, the William Wallace on the battlefield leading God's armies against the enemy. Yeah, that's awesome. But, but in this moment of my life, I just wanted God to give me his presence. And I'll never forget on a cold morning, January, it was January 2nd. It was the first week, of, uh, first week of January. And I was out on this farm. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm just crying out to God for his presence. And this joy began to fill me. And it was physical. I could feel it. And every hair on my body stood up. And I began to laugh because of this joy that was filling me. And then the joy got bigger. And it began to be terrifying. And I was crying and I was moaning as I was laughing. If anybody else had been there, they would have called the guys in the white coats and would shipped me off to the hospital. But this feeling grew to be terrifying. And then God spoke to me. And he said, how can you want to be a leader of my army? How can you want to be warrior if you don't know how to serve me. Many men have lived and loved me and died being thankful just for the, the privilege of serving me. And you want something? Well, who are you? I fell on my face in the mud. It was a farm, so it probably wasn't mud. But I fell on my face. And I, I didn't care. And I said, I will serve you no matter where you take I will serve you. I'm committing my life in this moment to serve you wherever. It doesn't matter. He said, okay. Get up. I work for you. And that quick, the weight was gone. The anxiety was gone. The pressure of my wife leaving and taking my daughter was gone. And I got up and I got in my car and I went home. Opened the door. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. And there's my wife on the computer whoever. She looks up and she says, I need you to take your daughter tomorrow because I'm going to be moving out and in with my boyfriend. I'm moving us both out. And I said, okay. There was no anxiety. There was no pain. It was okay because God had 
something for me, and that's what I was looking forward to. So the men's forum started. Um, first week came and talked about the retreat. This was before we, we joined with uh, the advance. So we talked about the retreat coming up, and two people came up to me and said, are you coming to the, are you coming to the retreat? And I felt like God wanted me to go to that retreat, but I had to work. I said, I'd love to come, but I have to work. The second week came along. Come to the retreat, three guys asked me. I feel God is calling me to this retreat, but I have to work. I'm sorry, I have to work. Third week comes along. The Monday before the retreat, I go to work, and I call the boss's office, and he says, you're not really fitting in here. We don't have any more need for you. Back your stuff. So I texted James on the way home, and I said, I just got fired from my job. And James is like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, if there's anything you need. I'm like, no, I'm stoked. I get to go to the retreat. <laughs> So I told Jim, I said, I don't know what it means, but I really feel like God says that I need to come to your church and serve you. What do you need done? I said, well, somebody cut the grass. Okay, see you Sunday. So I started there and I started cutting the grass. And from there, God taught me so much. I became the leader of a small men's group. I taught. I led Bible study. I <coughs> preached. God taught me that all the things in my life that had caused me problems, my stubbornness, my will, were all tools to use for His glory and not for my use.
a situation faithful, I would learn that that strength that I, that I learned there would lead me into the next one. He is a faithful God. And I'm standing here before you because he was merciful to me by removing his mercy and allowing me to reap the reward of my actions. So, I don't know if there's some guys here that, that know what that's like. Who you're going through the motions and maybe you have a position, maybe you have a small group and, but you know that the knowledge of God has always been in your head and it's never been in your heart. That you have never fully surrendered and I beg you, ask God to change you from the inside out because it's much preferable to having him change you from the outside in. That's all. Thanks guys.